Good morning. Welcome once again to Zen Minded Men. We're your host. I'm Sensei Art Gully Jr. I'm Sensei Vincent Ellis. And this week we are rounding out our series on the virtues of Bushido. Final subject being that of loyalty. Loyalty, a uh, simple Google search definition, simply states uh, the state or quality of being loyal faithfulness to commitments or obligations, faithful adherence to a sovereign government leader, cause, etc. Uh, an example or instance of faithfulness, adherence to uh, a man of, of fierce loyalties. So to further define, because it just says the act of being loyal, what is it to be loyal? Uh, loyal is defined as giving or showing firm and constant support or allegiance to a person or institution. Uh, support or allegiance is where I think, you know, in, in our endeavors, uh, it, it really comes to fruition. And on, on both ends, uh, from the teacher aspect, as well as the student aspect, as a as a martial arts student, you know, we are loyal to our teacher, to our sensei. Uh, you develop a, a sense of, of loyalty to them, a bond, so to speak, as they share their knowledge with you. And from my experience as a teacher, uh, you develop a sense of loyalty to your students as well. Um, especially, you know, what, what does it mean to be loyal on a very, uh, a very shallow aspect, I guess, or a very low level to be loyal as a student is uh, number one, to, to show up, right? Put in the time, that is so important. And it doesn't seem like a whole lot, but you know, when you show up on time and, and are ready to, to take your classes, to do your training, that is very much uh, a way of showing loyalty. And uh, it's recognized by the teacher. It, it is by me, mm -hmm. you know, I, I understand. And, and that gets my attention and that makes me want to all the more uh, work with that, with those students, you know, or that particular student, whatever, when they, when they show up ready and with a positive attitude, um, in the dojo, that is, you know, very much uh, a part of showing loyalty. I think we are in a, an interesting time, especially in, in martial arts. I think you and I have come along in a time where lo loyalty has shifted in a way, what we consider loyalty has shifted. I think when you and I both began our training or you know, we're, we're really young. Um, it, there, there was no cross training per se. If there was, it was very, very little, you know, we've, we both watched countless, you know, Hong Kong cinema films of, about, you know, the battles between the students of various Kung Fu schools or Kung Fu styles, <laughs> you know, where you're loyal to your style, loyal to your teacher, you know, the famous Bruce Lee quote, you know, you killed my teacher, you know, in, in the films. And that was the driving force on most of the movies. You killed my master. I must get right. my revenge. You, you killed my master. <laughs> I must get my revenge. But yeah, you know, there's there's loyalty to systems. There's loyalty to dojos. And I, you know, honestly, I think somewhere there in the 90s with the rise of, of MMA, uh, that that changed a little bit. Do you not do you agree with, with that? I do. I do. And um, one other thing with loyalty, another definition I pulled up, it's also loyal, loyal to uh, adherence or faithfulness to an idea. Now, the interesting point about when we say the, the switch of loyalties, you know, we were we were very we we're Ishinru, you know. Now I know you've you've had cross training before. Before I did Ishinru, I had a little Taekwondo training and I took some uh, Shotokan. You know, even Grandmaster Adams has took in several, you know, Kokolon, to name a few, but we are always loyal to Ishinru. 
which is fine. But I think the switches in loyalty is not necessarily a bad thing in terms of loyalty to your school, to your style. If you're still practicing your system and you're still practicing the principles espoused by your system, I think that's great. But if you take it a step further and you become loyal to the idea of what the martial arts is about, loyal to the idea of self-defense is about, then you owe it to yourself to explore other avenues. So when when the MMA became a factor and 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 jujitsu was introduced, and even you know more boxing, people are doing more boxing and they're learning Cali and scrima. You know, I think that the loyalty shifted so much it it became less centralized. It's like I'm not just loyal to my school, or I'm not just loyal to my general school. Now I'm loyal to the concept of learning all I can to do what I set out to do when I started Ishiro, become a better person, become a martial artist, become someone who could defend himself or handle himself in any situation. So when the loyalty switch, it definitely, it de there's definitely a shift in the diagram, no, no doubt about it. But I don't necessarily think that's a bad thing because it has forced us to evolve as martial artists. And Bruce Lee was always famous for saying, martial arts is about evolution, it's the ultimate form of self-expression. And uh, Sensei, uh, Grandmaster Adams, he he talks about that a lot. How your your technique has to evolve, you know, and if you stay loyal to the idea of learning all you can and evolving, then I think it's fine. Now, what I do see that, and I'm pretty sure you agree with me, especially with you being the owner of your school, there used to be a loyalty to teach good martial arts. Now it seems a lot of the schools that have popped up, they're more loyal to making the dollar. They get the students, they teach them whatever, but they're more loyal to making the dollar for themselves. They're more loyal to their financial gain and less loyal to their, what, how do I say it? Their curriculum, their teacher, their student. You know, it's like, it was a time when if, if, if Sensei, for instance, if we go out there and do something stupid, oh, he's coming after us because we're representing him. He's only gonna let certain people into his dojo. He's only gonna teach certain people certain things he's going to he's going to weigh your character he's going to say you're not the kind of character i want around me you have as he essentially likes to say you have bad energy now people are just let's like 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 the cobra kai karate kid dojo you got 100 bucks a month come on in you got 100 bucks a month come on in oh you're going to do this this one? no problem oh you're, you're beating people up at school well come on in so i think there's also another shift where we lose the lose sight of the, the, the true spiritual aspect of what martial arts should be, of what our karate should be, what our self-defense should be. And they're gravitating towards, I'm gonna make this money. I'm gonna be loyal to my bank account. Now that I have a problem with because loyalty is a beautiful thing, but you can be loyal to the wrong thing. Now, the question I wanna know is how do you differentiate between the right thing and the royal thing? I mean, excuse me, and the wrong thing. And that goes back to the other um, concepts of Bushido that we're talking about your integrity, your honesty, you know, your compassion, that will determine where your loyalties lie. I think we're seeing a very interesting time in our country. The country was divided with the election. Trump supporters, Biden supporters, uh, Republicans, Democrat. Let's just take it that way. And it, it's testing a lot of relationships, not just personal relationships, but business relationships, professional relationships. Where do your loyalties lie? You know, how do we navigate that? You know, how do you stay loyal to your beliefs, but still be able to maintain professional, personal relationship, business relationship without feeling like you're like, ah, you know, you and I are different, very different views. You know, you are, um, you were a Trump supporter. I was not a Trump supporter, but I can still be loyal to my beliefs there. I have my reasons of why I did not support him. You have your reasons why you do. I don't feel any less of myself for listening to your reasons because some of your reasons have made me say, hmm, let me think about that. So I think that sometimes loyalty can be problematic, especially when you look at learn, let's take gang violence, for instance, the so-called snitching. You know, you have a person in the neighborhood who's robbing people, beating people, hurting people, and you don't agree with it. You could put a stop to it, but for some reason, you feel less of a person, you feel less loyal to the so-called code of whatever by snitching. Now, and that's an example of what I say, loyal to the wrong thing, you know? Uh, I'm gonna give you a quick example. 
this morning, you know, it's after Thanksgiving, the garbage ran. And so I had one more bag the wife had packed up last night. So I heard the truck. So I ran out, threw the garbage out across the street. My neighbors, the young guys, they didn't take the garbage out. And the truck had just went by. And it's just piled to the top. And I looked down and I said, you know what? I'm so sick of always doing that for them. And I turned to go back in the house. And then I said to myself, you know what? If I don't take it out, then that's a problem for me. So I ran, of course, I got it. I brought it on my side and the trucks took it. And to me, that was a, it, it, it timed in perfect with the subject because I wasn't necessarily loyal to them and helping them, but I was loyal to the idea that I want my neighborhood to stay clean. So being loyal to that idea, being loyal to that cause made me rise above pettiness. You know, they're not my people. I ain't got to take their garbage out. Okay, I'm going to do my garbage out. I'm loyal to my family. However, I'm also loyal to the idea of a better neighborhood all around, which made me rise above the pettiness. So let me get this garbage, take it out. And like Master Woods always said, you did that, what did it cost you? Nothing, but what did it gain you? Everything. So I think that loyalty is like compassion. Loyalty is tricky. You want to be loyal, but you want to be loyal to the right thing or cause. Absolutely. Yeah, you hit on a lot of good things right there. Loyalty, yeah, can be stifling if it's if it's in the wrong done in the wrong way, and uh, kind of go back to the beginning of where you started your statement with, uh, you know, as a as an instructor, as a as a dojo owner, but more importantly as an instructor, uh, that's kind of the way I, I like to look at it. A martial arts instructor more so than a dojo owner, as a the dojo owner puts more of a commercial spin on it you know, and uh, makes, it's the wrong mindset, you know what I'm saying? So for myself, I want to make sure that I'm always looking at it from, you know, the, the aspect of imparting good martial arts to my students. Um, we were, we're, we've been very fortunate. I mean, both of us, all of my, you know, whether it was Master Adams or, uh, you know, Mr. Steins, whatever, all my instructors, have been world-class martial artists and none of them have at, they've you know I've, I feel a sense of loyalty to them but even while training in their dojos they all had the confidence in what they were teaching to allow us to explore other things you know they didn't ask for blind loyalty there's a lot of instructors out there that will force their students to stay within a very small uh, pool, so to speak. You know, they, they don't want them out there. You know, they, they don't want them going to open tournaments out there on a circuit. They'll compete in a, a little closed inner club or maybe one, two, three schools within an organization. Um, they, they won't allow their students to go to seminars and explore different things because they, you know, in my opinion, this is my opinion, a lot of them fear that maybe some of their weaknesses will be exposed. So they demand this blind loyalty. And, you know, in, in that aspect, it's much like you were talking about with, uh, you know, the maybe the gang situation or, you know, neighborhood loyalty. Uh, it's really interesting because, again, the the dichotomy, I'll borrow your word again, the dichotomy or the, the actually the duality, it's not really a dichotomy, it's more of a, a duality between, you know, living in an urban environment where you're at, and, you know, I'm, I'm familiar with that, spent half my life there, 30 years in, in the, at least in the suburbs, and then living here in southeastern Kentucky in the foothills of, of Appalachia, it's, it's a little bit, it's different, but it's the same, because uh, in, in out here in the country, you know, we're, we're very clannish people in the sense uh, that, you know, it's, it's about family and unity of the family. And then beyond that kind of your, your neighbors, you know, but that whole snitches get stitches thing, it's real here too. You know, there's a lot of, we have the same problems that go on here that we do in the inner cities. You know, we have the opioid epidemic, you know, for example, you know, we, we have drug problems. We have people out here stealing, 
And we, we have people out here doing bad things. And the same element of, you know, we're not selling out our kinfolk to the, to the cops, you know, that's, that's real here, unfortunately, you know, and, and most of the time, you know, in the old days, people would kind of take care of their own on both ends. You know, if you got out of line, your, your family would, would check you because you're running down the family name. You know, that's, that's a big deal here, you know, in, in a lot of ways, your, your name carries weight, either pro or con, you know, some, some names, as soon as you hear it, you kind of know, you know, who you're dealing with, uh, other, you know, on both sides. So they either have, you know, generations of positivity or generations of negativity. So a lot of people are raised up and, you know, you mentioning being loyal to the wrong things it's hard for people to escape or get out of a certain groove because they feel a sense of loyalty to their past which is unfortunate you know it's 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 crazy in in that way uh and, and i know that that happens the same way in metro detroit as it does here in eastern kentucky you know and uh it's un it's really unfortunate because it just brings that cyclic you know mindset to it blind loyalty to to a negative concept is going to hold you back yes. big big time and you know you mentioned the election and this year i think has been well we'll say the last 4 years you know coming really the last 12 years we'll go back 12 years coming out of the obama administration or even in the obama administration into what was the, the Trump administration and now whatever's gonna happen going forward has brought out some really interesting things. Um, yeah, I, I was a Trump supporter, not, I'm, I'm not a Republican, I am a conservative, but I'm an, I'm an independent, you know, I, I, would, I will never vote a straight ticket. I wanna, I wanna put the best person in the, in the office based on their abilities. I'm the uh, same way. I never vote a stress a straight ticket. I want to if it's a Democrat, I want to look at each person. But you know, it's just hard for me to get behind their social platform right now. But anyway, all that to say this. Um whether you know, I come from a family of southerners, you know, my my mom's family was from South Carolina. Uh my dad's family was from here in southeastern Kentucky. Uh, automotive family. You know, my grandma was UAW in in Michigan. My my grandpa up there, he was a teamster. So there's a lot of what would you would assume uh, Democrats, you know, hardcore Southern Democrats. Uh, my my wife's father, same thing for UAW employee. Uh, there was a I I can't get behind that, you know straight ticket men mentality I, you know times change I, ideas change and un unfortunately the ideologies uh have changed so you have to be mindful of what you're loyal to in that aspect and and i think you know with with yourself in, in particular uh the the black community has been counted on as as a, a democratic base forever but you know yeah i follow uh, several black conservatives on you know youtube and stuff i like to like to listen to what what they have to say and you know they get a lot of kick you know a lot of flack uh but again whether you're right or wrong i think it's great that people uh have individual thought you know i, I think that's important when we want to try to compartmentalize each other based on color that's not ad advancing what we're what we're trying to do at all you know whether it's it's white or black or hispanic or asian or whatever you know i i think we we should be careful when uh you're loyal when when you want to as you mentioned, there's like levels of, of loyalty, I guess, but you have to decide where you draw those lines. 
we you've made reference to uh and when, when we've talked about this in the past uh the film a few good men and their code you know unit core god country those are all levels of, of loyalty you know you're loyal to your unit first the core second god third then the country uh when those things start conflicting with each other your loyalty shifts between those dynamics uh as far as priority so where you know you can set your priorities at, at different levels and I get it, you know, on both sides of the coin, people want to be loyal, say it, loyal to race, which I think is is very unfortunate on both sides. It, it's it's really interesting in the fact that, you know, I I feel uncomfortable. I, I literally feel uncomfortable to, you know, maybe state the fact that, you know, to be loyal to the white community, it just sounds so negative you know, sounds very, very negative. And it, it gives me an eerie feeling to even say it out loud. Um, but it's unfortunate. And any other community can say it and, and it not be a, a negative con connotation. You know, mm -hmm. there was a, a friend of ours that had a post on Facebook. It, this has been a while back. But the post was two pretty young Black ladies holding a sign. And it said, pro-black is not anti-white, which I looked at it and my thought was, in my response, I actually commented on it. And I said, for a statement to be true, the opposite must also be true. So if I had two young black or white women there holding a sign that said pro-white is not necessarily anti-black, I think that would really be seen as a racist statement by, by most. In some circles, it would, and that's and that's unfortunate because interesting fact. I was watching you. You know me and my shows. <laughs> There's this great show on Amazon called Cobra, and it's a, it's a British show, and it's about what the British government would do in the event of a national disaster. This one was a uh, the power went out. And there's a lot of there's a lot of racial tension over in England. You know they have a lot of minorities with the the black, the Asian, the, the Arabic community. But um, one of the things the reporter was from Pakistan, and the the the, the protagonist of of the of the of the freedom cause or whatever, he was white, a white British man. And one of the things he says, he says, you know, you got to remember. I know there's problems in 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 the minority community. He said, but there are also a million white folks in England who are also having problems as well. And I'm trying to make it better for everyone, just because what I'm doing may impact the minority community community doesn't mean it won't impact my community because I still want to be faithful to who I am. I'm a white person. And I, I listened to that line. It was, it was a good line and report. It was an interesting dialogue between the two. And unfortunately the guy ended up getting, you know, the government assassinated and they ran him over with a car, but it made a valid point as to what you said. It's nothing wrong with supporting what you are. I'm a black man. So I support the black community, but I do not support ignorance and violence in the black community. I do not support the, in my opinion, abuse of marijuana in the black community. I do not support the, the, the perpetration of ignorance in the black community. I don't support that. I support black people achieving what they can, becoming educated, you know, caring for one another, helping for one another, the original cause of what we first had you know i support that and it can be misconstrued oh you're not down for the i said you know i am down for you but i don't like the the loud disruptive music the doing the, the wheelies in the street the constant cursing and the con i don't support that because to me i don't care if you're white black asian or martian that's ignorant behavior i don't support ignorant behavior i don't support it with the white community if you're ignorant i don't support you if you're an intelligent white man, female, trying to do right by your family, I'm going to support you. If you're Arabic, if you're Asian, no matter, I'm going to support intelligence. I'm going to support hard work, determination. I'm going to support decency. I'm not going to support, you know, people, we look at the, look at the Taliban and you look at um, ISIS and you look at all of this stuff. I'm sorry. I don't, I understand what you're trying to do, but I don't support the, the needless slaughter of people to make a point. I don't care what you're trying to prove. I don't support the needless slaughter 
of, of any group of people to make a point. I just can't get behind that. It, it's, it's like that cost to me, you know, what are you being loyal to? Are you being, if you, if you truthfully want to be loyal to a cause, you need to stop and look at the cause. You need to say, what are the ramifications? What does this mean? What is it doing? And what are the costs? Because a lot of things, it's hard to be an honest person. We talked about honesty. It's hard to be an honest person. If you, if you want to be honest and you want to be loyal to the fact that you're honest, you got to be prepared to lose a few friends. Because if you're honest all the time, yeah. But you're not being loyal to the friend. You're being loyal to the idea of being honest. Now, I'd rather have an honest friend than a friend of expedience any day. We talk about our, you know, us both being long, um, long married men. You know, my wife is the most brutally honest person I know. She will tell me straight up when I'm messing up. Okay. And yes, it pisses me off. Of course, I'm a man. I'll get upset. But I can always count on her to tell me what's on her mind. And to me, that is a sign of loyalty. She's being loyal to me by telling me where I need to step up my game. I try to do the same to her. Like, listen, you, I believe you're wrong on this. It causes friction, but she always knows that I'm going to tell you what you ask. I'm going to tell you what I think. So you can always count. If I tell you something, you can always count on it. Just, well, you know what? He's speaking from the heart. And to me, that's important. And that takes us back to being loyal to your idea, being loyal to yourself, being loyal to the foundation of what it is you want, as opposed to, I'm going to be loyal to you and go along with everything you say, irregardless of the fact that it's doing irreparable damage to you or someone you love or whatever. No, I want to be loyal to the idea. And that rounds us back off when we're at the dojo. We learn early on to be loyal to the teachings. Because if I'm loyal to the key teaching, I'm going to adhere to what I'm learning. I'm going to practice. I'm going to train. I'm going to work that bag. I'm going to work those angles. Because if I'm not loyal to the teachings, I'm going to find out real quick that I made a big mistake. The first punch I keep blocked, if I wasn't loyal to what Sensei did, it's going to show real quick. Sensei is loyal to us by constantly improving our techniques pointing out those little things, correcting those tiny, tiny things, and constantly telling us, keep training, keep training, keep training. And what I like about, uh, we're really fortunate, we actually see our teachers on the mat, our grandmasters, our high dons on the mat, training hard. I'm going to tell you, um, at Southfield, and you know, Master uh, Mike Chafer, phenomenal martial artist. When that man walks into dojo, he's training. He's not walking around with his arms folded. He's on that mat. He is blazing those katas. He's doing those basics. And he's telling you, okay, you need to work on this. Let's work on that. He's training and he's teaching. Master Adams, a lot of times when he's showing you something, he's right there doing the kata with you. He's okay, let's go over this. He's not standing back saying this and this and that. No, you know, Doc Roseman, Master Roseman, he's training. He's on there training. These are guys who who are eighth, ninth dons, grandmaster, I mean, excuse me, master early, same thing. Even when he comes in late from work and it's too late to change up and he sits on that side, he's watching everything you do. He's writing stuff down. He's, he's calculating. Later on, he'll say, yeah, you know, when you're out there, blah, 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 let's work on this. Next time we're on the mat, let's work on this. You know, they're being loyal to the concept of being a martial arts teacher, like you pointed out. And that was, so, I'm so glad you pointed that out because that was really great. You're loyal to being a martial arts teacher as opposed to being a dojo owner. Because if you're loyal to the dojo owner, you may skip a few things because you are trying to keep that dojo open. But if you're loyal to a martial arts teacher, you'll learn to adapt. And that's, that's a great thing. I think in a lot of aspects, we gotta become loyal to the ideas of what we want as opposed to loyal to the specifics of that idea. You know, I'm a dad, I'm gonna be loyal to my children. I'm gonna do that by making sure they have everything they need. You know, we had an interesting conversation around the dinner table last night and the boys were saying a lot of their friends, they don't talk to their fathers. You know, they can't communicate with their fathers. And my oldest son, he said, that's just weird. You know, he's always got his own mindset. We, we, we have friction every now and then, but even him, he, so he'll come and tell me, he said, dad, this is going on, this is going on, this is going on, this is going on, blah, 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 blah. And I appreciate the fact because it shows that I've been loyal to them so they know that if I need an ear to bend, if I need someone in my corner, I know dad's there. He may not agree with it. 
and he may probably give me an air full of it, but down in the, it, where it counts, he's got my back. And that is something that we should all aspire to in terms of loyalty. Loyalty is an interesting thing. It could be the rope that pulls you out, or it could be the chain that holds you down. If you're loyal to a cause that's wrong and you won't evolve, you're gonna get drugged down and discarded. If you're holding on to something that's positive and no matter what you're going through, you still got this idea, that is gonna pull you up. So like I said, if, if you really want to explore what loyalty is, just think about it in terms of that. Loyalty can be the rope that pulls you up or the chain that holds you down. And that's true of all of the virtues we've espoused. Integrity, compassion, you know, honesty, it's true of everything. Everything you do, every virtue, you can either pull you out of something or it could hold you back. The trick is learning when to shift it, when to shift it. And like you said, a shifting loyalties, when you're looking at that, when they start conflicting, you know, how do you shift it? Let's, let's, let's look at a family situation. A family member is doing wrong. You want to be loyal to the family member, but at the same time, you know they're doing wrong. You've got to be loyal to your core belief of right and wrong. And that may mean going against that family member, but you've got to do it in a way. Say, listen, you know, I love you. You're my brother. But dude, you beat this girl half to death for no reason. I'm sorry. I'm going to beat you. I'm beating you down. And if her parents come demanding justice, I'm going to step back and let them take you to jail because you did wrong. Now, I'll come visit you in jail and I will you know, recommend that you get counseling. I'll support you and be loyal to you that way, but I won't be loyal to that bad behavior. And that's what we have to look at. Are you being loyal to the idea of something that's good and positive, or are you just being loyal to a specific person or a specific thing because it gives you a sense of comfort? You know, we're blindsided in America. We get caught up in all of these fads, you know, all of a sudden, a $4,000 pair of gym shoes, everybody thinks it's stupid. You get one or two celebrities wearing it. Now, all of a sudden, oh, yeah, that's, I got to have that. I got to have that. And then whoever doesn't have it, they become the subject of ridicule. Well, okay, never mind that in order to have that, you're putting yourself in the poorhouse. You know, are you being loyal to the idea of having something better and then you'll work for it? Or are you just being loyal to, well, I don't, I, I got to look good. What are you being loyal to? And it, 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 it messes us up. It turns us against one another. It, it turns us into drones. You know, are you gonna be loyal to your own self or are you gonna be loyal to something that's gonna lead you in a very, very, very bad direction? And I think that is what the dojo has taught us. It gives us the foundation of loyalty because we start, we're not loyal to specific people in the dojo. We're loyal to what they're teaching us. And of course, I'm loyal to sensei, I'm loyal to master woods, of course. I'm not gonna let you talk about my, talk about my sensei and all that's true. But I'm that way because I know my sensei cares enough about me to give me the best martial arts training that he is capable of giving me, okay? He believes that this is the way to go. He has proven it and he has shown me that it works and he challenges me to go do other. Like you said, some people teach their students in that little small knit. You know, Master Adams, Master Woods, all of them, they always say, okay, there's an open tournament. Yeah, go see what you're doing. Go see with this, go see with this. Master Adams says all the time, if you do this, I promise you, whatever situation, this will work. If you don't do this, then I can't guarantee the results. And he's right. Whatever the situation he's taught me, the blocks I was learned, the movement I was learned, the weight shifts I was learned, works. And that is a sense that makes me want to be loyal to the school and to those teachings because they are loyal to the idea I had of becoming the best martial artist I can. Now, as a teacher, I know, I know for a fact, because I know you, that you're very, very, very determined to make sure your kids and students and adults have the best training as possible. You know, I know this. If you come across a problem where a student was, let's say you detected that they may become a bully or let's go the whole Cobra Kai thing, how do you how would you how do you deal with that without crushing the spirit, but still being loyal to your concept of hey I'm gonna teach you the right thing? How do you how do you deal with stuff like that? 
twofold, I guess. One, number one, it really depends on the, the individual. Um, you and I both come up in this in a very similar situation in the dojo where it was very difficult uh, to get too big headed because there was so many people with the ability to humble you. Right. So first and foremost, you know, when I see somebody developing that sort of attitude, uh, I try to make sure that they get paired with somebody that's that's going to challenge them. Uh, so, you know, that's that's the biggest thing is, you know, try to try to keep their ego in check by constantly keeping them challenged. Um, I, I know I've been done that way a lot. You know, you, you, you start to get a little bit big headed and, you know, some somebody will step in uh, again, you know, just going back on our, our history. We always had guys like, you know, Sensei Rice, Sensei Early. You mentioned, you know, Master Schaefer. When a guy steps on the mat with one foot pad on and says, you know, why aren't you wearing two? I only need one. I'm only going to hit you with this foot. You know, <laughs> those are lessons you keep with you for a while. You know, one glove, one foot pad. That's all. I only need two limbs to beat you. You, <laughs> you know, <laughs> so you stay humble. So as a teacher, I, I carry those same lessons that I learned, you know, on onto the mat with me. So, and if it's beyond that, you know, I, I do like to try to maintain, you know, a, a personal rapport where, you know, some, sometimes it is, you know, pulling somebody in the office and just having a conversation. You know, some, sometimes you got to do that, you know, just have that one-on-one -on -one or, you know, even with a parent, if it's a kid, you know, you want to make sure the parents are involved. Sometimes it's just talking to the parent. But, you know, you definitely got to keep those attitudes in, in check. And Attitude is attitude when you when you think of it, it, it. Attitude is a tricky thing. It's a very tricky thing. You know, in terms of like, it, when you look at a work situation and I know I'm well, I'm in the auto industry, I'm on the line and a lot of the new guys always come and talk to me because I've, I've been there so long. I'm like, I'm like the dust that they just shift around. I've been there so long. And one of the new guys, I really like this guy, you know, really big fella, just started young guy. And we talk all the time and he, he gets so upset at the slightest little thing that doesn't happen. And I tell him, I said, you have to remember you're at a plant. The one thing that you can always count on is the little line that they put at the bottom of every piece of paper they give you. This is tentative and subject to change. If they tell you we're gonna work eight hours all week, this is tentative and subject to change. If they tell you we only need 150 trucks a day so you guys might get out early, this is tentative and subject to change. If they tell you this tool will be fixed for you tomorrow, this is tentative and subject to change. I used to get so frustrated and so angry with the plant and I still do to this time, but I don't let that affect my work, no matter how disgusted I am with those tooling engineers or management or whatever. I don't let that stop me from making sure those lug nuts are on, that tire is secured and that safety code is hit and that torque is proper because I'm not loyal to the bosses. I'm not loyal to that mess. I'm loyal to the idea that I am making a product that someone is gonna be driving and that someone is somebody's loved one and I want them to be safe. And I tell them, I said, you have to get yourself, get yourself out of that whole, you know, well, he said he was gonna do this and he didn't, he, he's sending me over here, that ain't right. I'm, I'm, I said, don't be loyal to the people in here. Be loyal to the idea of why you're here. You're here to build a truck and to make a good living. In order for me to make a good living, I gotta make a quality truck. And for that truck to be quality, that means I got to do my best. And the reason I'm doing my best is twofold. I'm loyal to my family. I'm going to make a good living to support them. But I'm also loyal to the stranger who's going to get in that truck, counting on me to have done that job right. As long as you, if you, if you can stay loyal to those two concepts, then everything else will be fine. Yeah, you're going to get frustrated. We're humans. You know, we're going to get pissed off. Oh, my wife and family get an earful of the BS that goes on in work. But 
what always strikes me as odd is people, oh, forget that. They want to play me like that. All right, I'm putting this in the board. Like, whoa, 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 whoa. Why are you putting this in the board? You're capable of doing the job. What's the problem? You know, my gun at work that I use the multiple, this thing has been jacked up since before we went on changeover. Three months, they ripped out the plant, put it back together. And this gun is still trash. I can't hardly use it. It tears you up, but it does not stop me. And I, I fuss about it constantly. We wrote grievances about it. Um, Motrin is tearing my hip up and I'm very, very frustrated. But I still make sure every single tire is done properly. And if something is not right, I'm still shutting that line off and getting them down and say, hey, this doesn't look right to me. You know, I don't want to send this through. Because not only am I worried about the end customer, I'm worried about the next operator who maybe can't do his job or puts in danger because I'm just mad, so I'm not going to do that. So again, no matter how bad it gets, don't be loyal to the pettiness. Be loyal to the idea that you're trying. You know, Be loyal to your own personal standards of ethics. If you can do that, that becomes the rope that pulls you up. You start playing into that pettiness, then that's the chain that's going to hold you down. And a lot of our people in our world, it seems like they're they're kind of holding on to that. You know, everyone got their own agendas, but what is your agenda? Jumping on this cause, but what is this cause? You're supporting this person, but why are you supporting this person? Okay. I voted for him because of this. Well, is he smart? I voted for her because she's black, but is does she know what she's doing? I'm not voting for him because he's white. But does he have the knowledge to do what he needs to do? I'm not going to Vince's school because from Kentucky, I already know he's got a Klan hood in his closet. But have you ever had a conversation with him? Have you noticed the Christian symbol? Have you listened to how he loves his family? Have you noticed that the majority of his friends are multicolored? See, it's little things like that. If you're loyal to negative stuff, then you're negative. But if you're loyal to a concept that's positive, you're going to be good. My wife broke me down yesterday because. I suffer from anxiety and I tend to get, and she just broke it down. She says, you know, this holiday, you're kind of in this weird kind of funk and you expect everyone to adapt to it, but are you adapting to us? I get that you have, I get that you have hard days. I get that you have that, but do you understand that we have hard days too and that we're live, dealing with you? Do you really stop and think about that? And as usual, I didn't want to hear it. And as usual, she was right. I gotta be loyal to the concept that I wanna be the best version of myself for my family. So in order to do that, I gotta swallow my ego, swallow my pride, admit that I was an asshole and try to move forward. And that's something that a lot of people have such a hard time to do. You told us the story last week, I mean, excuse me, well, a couple of weeks back, and it was really interesting how you said, um, when you were telling, you've, you've, uh, you found uh, Christianity later in life and how your son broke it down to you, You've been this way most of my life. When you can be this way for 20 or so years, then you can question me or then we'll have a conversation. And to me, I thought that was really, it was really good because it makes you stop. It's easy for us to get on our high horses, but it's very difficult when we get knocked off those horses. The dojo, which as we do bring it always back, because like you said, it, it is the framework on which we drape our lives on. It teaches you very, very, very quickly that you got to adapt and change. And you're right, uh, Master earlier, Master Rice, they would get on there with that one glove and say, I'm only gonna hit you with this glove. And they would break you down and you would go home wondering, why can I not do that? You know, and you may have thought you were just, mm -mm -mm. and one thing that, uh, that uh, Sensei used to do and Master Woods used to do too, which used to always crack me up, you will get humbled by the person you least expect. You won't get humbled by the big warrior who you know. You'll get humbled by someone who you least expect. You know, Master Woods used to always uh, laugh at me because I'm always smiling. I'm always grinning. You know, when we were at Southfield, I know. Do you remember Sensei Sue Stevens? Yes. She used to run the class, and I thought she was she was a phenomenal teacher. And we had a a, a guy came in visiting one that one evening, and this guy. I guess he was being a real a-hole, big burly guy. And I was in the back working weapons and she came out and she said, um, she said, Mr. Gully, we have a guy that's being difficult. Would you maybe go up front and 
teach him the error of his ways. I said, well, sure. So I go up and I meet the guy. He's blusterous and this and that. So I said, oh, let's cool it So we start fighting. And I just, I just started hitting him, like hitting him hard. And every time I did it, I smiled. And I just kept my, I kept my smile, I kept my demeanor. And we were so by the time I got finished beating this guy down, you know, he says, dude, he says, I got to tell you, how, how do you fight so good, but still be so happy all the time? I said, dude, I'm not fighting right now. He said, I'm trying to learn something and I'm trying, hoping you're trying to learn something. And he did. And what I, what, what that made me realize is if I'm loyal to the technique, don't be loyal to the idea of beating this guy down. Don't be loyal to the idea of being a badass myself. Be loyal to the idea of proving that what I was taught works and that my training works. That's what I'm loyal to. Whenever you and I used to fight, I went home a lot of nights really hating you because I had to take ice baths and swallow Motrin and Tolerant. But it was great because we were both loyal to being the best martial artists we can. And that made us into the people we are today. And I'm, I'm really proud of what I've accomplished. I know you're proud of what you accomplished. And when I tell something, when I teach someone, ask me a question and I answer it, I'm hoping I'm giving you the right answer. And I always tell people, if I tell you something, now if I tell you something and you disagree with it or whatever, that's sensei. And if he tells you I was wrong, please come back and tell me so that I won't be, you know, I'm not loyal to my ego. I'm loyal to the concept of making sure I have the right information. And that's something that everyone should aspire to in every aspect of your life. Don't be loyal to, to, to the concept or the ego or what's, what it's going to do for you, how good you're going to look. Be loyal to how you are going to improve and how you can improve after that. So, you know, again. Yeah. 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 Agree. You know, you were, you were talking about being at work. Um, I, I work in a, for a Japanese company and it's really interesting. The dynamic there uh, in the, in the Japanese company, they're very loyal to their employer. It's uh, odd. Typically what, what will happen, you know, is in a Japanese culture, they'll finish their school and either go to a university, then go to work or they'll finish schooling and they'll go to work. And like, they'll have one job. That's it throughout their entire working career. So right now we're experiencing a really high turnover rate uh, in our facility and it puzzles them, you know, and I, it's really high now, but always, you know, especially within the professional fields like engineering. Uh, when when someone would leave the company and go to work for another company, they would often ask, you know, why? Why why do Americans change? You know, why would you why would you leave the company? And uh, it's it's interesting because I think as a culture in the United States we've, we've never been loyal. I I can say this from my own experience. I've never really been brought up to have a loyalty to the longevity of my employment. I'll say that. Uh, Again, I I think I've mentioned this before, but you know, I'm both my parents instilled uh, a positive work, worth work ethic in me. You know, they made sure that you know, we understood when you, when you go to work and and punch in, that's, you know, you're being paid for your time. You owe your employer some value for that time. But in a way we are, as a culture, we're used to being kind of bought out, you know, that, that time is, is bought and paid for. And, you know, we do that, but we don't really have a problem with severing that relationship and going on to another person who will buy my time for as much or more. You know, oftentimes we are loyal to that, uh, to that dollar sign as employees. Now, uh, there was a time where, you know, there was corporate retirements and things like that. I know that's still big in some companies, but not near as common as it used to be. Now you have maybe contribution to a 401k or something like that, but that's mobile. You know, you, you take your 401k with you, but you know, the, the whole Japanese culture has a very different 
view of what it is to be loyal. And I think when, you know, in, in terms of uh, Bushido, to look at it from their eyes is, uh, is, is interesting because it really is uh, a lot of times to be loyal to the death, uh, sometimes for good, sometimes for bad. Uh, one of the most famous uh, instant or examples, I guess, uh, of loyalty with, within the Japanese culture that I can think of, uh, you've heard the story of the 47 Ronin. I know oh, yes. there's been a lot of movies uh, made of it, both overseas and uh, and here in the U.S., but that's that's a factual event. You know that that really happened, and there was a, there is a monument in Japan to the forty seven Ronin. Um, I've I've looked it up, read about it, but you know, for those who are not familiar with that, a Ronin is a, a samurai without a lord. Uh, we've talked about this before. Samurai meant you know to be a servant or to, to serve. Uh, one of the reasons why I have this kanji on my dojo symbol, it, it is the kanji for samurai. So it is one who serves. But a ronin, a warrior without a lord was called a, a ronin. These, these 47 gentlemen served a lord and their lord was kind of tricked into committing ritual suicide, uh, seppuku. And after doing so, they kind of made a pact that they would avenge the, the death of their teacher. We go back to the beginning, right? You killed my teacher mm -hmm. or, or their, you know, their, their Lord. And uh, they did. I mean, it, it took some time and, but eventually it come to fruition and, and they were able to uh, kind of clear their, their masters or their Lord's uh, name and, Avenge his death, and then they, in turn, each committed ritual suicide. Uh, that's that's loyalty to to a fault, you know, or to a the highest level. And you know, we we see that and think how crazy that is. But you know, we're both again men of faith, and I think if you look at you know the the New Testament, another awesome example of loyalty even if you just study it from that aspect is uh the life of jesus you know throughout his entire ministry it was never about him you rarely hear jesus mention himself he always says i'm about my father's work mm -hmm. you know i'm here i'm about my father's work it's always uh to the greater cause you know loyalty to the greater cause and again loyal to the death, right? He had an opportunity to, to get out of it. You know, he, he probably could have said no at some point, but, you know, he, he wrote it out to the bitter end uh, for our good. So really, really, really interesting. Um, loyalty to, you know, in a, in a relationship, you know, loyalty in a, in a relationship is so important, even within the family dynamic. You mentioned being loyal to your family. Uh, that's so important. But again, when we look back at levels of loyalty or priorities of loyalty, where do those lie? Um, the commandment adultery is often misconstrued. And I'm going down this religious rabbit hole, and I apologize, but it's important in in the in the context of this discussion. Uh, we, as a Western civilization, look at adultery as a, a sexual sin, and it's not. Uh, adultery is covenant breaking. So to be an adulterer is not to be unfaithful to your wife sexually. It's to be unfaithful to your wife in in your covenant or your agreement of marriage, um, when when Jesus accused the the Jews of being an adulterous generation and saying they would all perish, it wasn't that they were all cheating on their spouses. It's that none of them kept their word. You know, none of them were were loyal to 
their commitments. And in a relationship, the most important covenant, the, the most important bond that you have is that to your wife and then to your children. You know, and a lot of times I think we we get that jacked up uh, and we we have a tendency to put our children first. And at some point, if we do that right, you know, our children leave and that mm-hmm. leaves you there with maybe a jaded spouse, which, you know, and, and it, it works both ways, whether it's the husband or the wife. You know, you really should strive to be loyal to one another, first and foremost. And that that is a parallel to what we talked about kind of earlier in, you know, bringing this back to the dojo and the way I see my priorities in the dojo, you know, I'm, I'm probably a poor businessman, but I'm a pretty good teacher. Uh, Mm -hmm. I want to make sure that my students are learning a quality art and have a, a quality of technique. And my bottom line is, is going to suffer. Uh, because of it so again all that to say this loyalties I I think you did an excellent job of kind of bringing that analogy forward it's either the rope that you can climb out on or the the chain to hold you down and it's something that you've got to constantly monitor because you you can you know be loyal to, you know, we should be loyal citizens to the United States of America. At some point, though, our government shows corruption, then we can't be loyal to that. You know, you look at our founding fathers, they were loyal to the king, you know, they were loyal colonists to the king of England, until that became harmful to them, or, you know, uh, in, in, in that aspect, their loyalties changed. You know, and that brought about the revolution and probably the greatest experiment in uh, democracy that, that's ever been. Mm-hmm. And who knows? You know, we're in very, very strange times. And I don't want to see our country divided uh, by geographic lines or ideology or worse, by religion or, or by color. Uh, but, you know, we, we really have to take uh, inventory of ourselves and our ideas and our loyalties and kind of put those, uh, we got to categorize those and decide, you know, which are priority. You got to prioritize and categorize those, those loyalties. And it, it really is makes for some interesting thoughts for sure it's going to lead to what i like to call a long dark night of the soul for a lot of people and if anyone listening a long dark night of the soul is when you're in a situation and it forces you to reevaluate everything you thought and usually it happens at night and it's you you don't know how you're going to climb out of something you got to really start thinking of a way to overcome something that's that's that long dark night of the soul and if you can be honest with yourself you'll come through it and the first thing you have to do is be honest with where your loyalty is i think first and foremost and some people may think this is selfish your loyalty needs to lie with yourself you have to be loyal to yourself because if you're not loyal to yourself, you can't be loyal to anyone else. You know, most people say it's easy. If you don't take care of yourself, how can I take care of you? If I can't be honest with myself, how can I be honest with you? If you're not loyal to yourself, you can't be loyal to anyone else. Now, there's many degrees of self-loyalty. You have to come up with what yours is going to be, what your concept, what your idea is. You know, for us, the dojo and our faiths and our religion provides what we kind of a framework for us, you know, I know I want to be an honest person with integrity, compassionate. I want to be strong. I'm going to work towards those things. I'm going to be loyal to those ideas for myself so that I can take those ideas towards my family. But everyone has to determine for themselves what they're loyal to. Unfortunately, that also creates a problem because you have 
some die hard racists on both ends of the spectrum. And they're loyal to the idea of racial superiority, whether they're white or black or Arabic or Asian, you know, their idea of racial purity. And that is where the problem comes in because you get loyal to a cause that's so destructive that you ultimately destroy yourself. How do you snap that or how do you change that? The one good thing I can say about these last four years and even the preceding years during the Obama administration and the Trump administration, it has ripped open a lot of the maggots, the underbelly of this country. It has brought so much to light. You can't really heal a cut until you clean it out first. Our country was a big festering wound for so long. And I think we've ripped that Band-Aid off of it. And I think we're in the process of clearing it out. We've shown the racism. We've shown the sexism. We've shown the injustice. We've shown the classism. Now, people are having honest communication and dialogue. Yeah, some of it's argument, a lot of it is. But there is change attempting to be affected. If we can stay loyal to the idea of truth, I think we may have a chance to bring this country back together. If we want to continue to be loyal to this cause or that cause just because bro, my dad was this, or I'm this, you know, my mom was this, or I'm this, my boy's doing this, or I'm that. If we continue to be loyal to specious causes, then it, it, we're doomed. But if we can be loyal to, if nothing else, be loyal to the cause of truth within yourself, within your community, look at yourself, take an accurate accounting of yourself and be loyal to finding out what you are, who you are and what you can do. You know, my wife is one of her biggest things she always says is you gotta be loyal. She says, you know, I got, you gotta be loyal. You gotta be loyal. A person, this and that, I admire that person because he's loyal. To her, that is a virtue that's above pretty much everything else because she's gotta know that you, you got my back no matter what. Now. I don't have a problem with that, but I will have your back. But if you're doing wrong, I'm gonna let you know because now I've gotta be loyal to my belief, which is truth. I cannot, you know, I'm always the devil's advocate. I can't just agree with you. Gotta figure out what it is you're standing for, no matter who that is. And that causes conflict. I'm willing to risk that conflict because I'm being loyal to my own ideas that I wanna know something i want to see all sides i want to know what this is really about that's the only way we can progress you know you can't just blindly follow something now don't get me wrong if there's a situation going on oh yeah i got your back in the street i got you the moment we get along i'm gonna be like like sensei always says if you're in a situation and you put yourself there you call on us we coming to get you but once we find out what it was then we beating you down <laughs> If what you did was wrong, then I'm gonna beat you down. You know, I'm not gonna leave you out there for anyone else to take care of. We'll get you out of it. But once we find out what you did, oh, I'm rest assured, we gonna beat you down. So there's nothing wrong with being loyal to a fault, as they say. Just be loyal to the right thing. And if you don't know what to be loyal to, be loyal to truth. Truth is the one thing that no matter what you do, it will always come out. It will always come out. And I know you've had experiences where you tried to tell half truths or so truths or 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 or, or mission of truth, you know. I won't tell you everything. So I didn't I didn't lie. I told the truth. I just didn't tell you all of it. And it never, it just never works out. It never works out. Just be 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 loyal to truth about yourself, about your situation, about those around you. If you can do that, you will go far. In the dojo, we have to be loyal to truth. We have to be loyal to the truth of our technique. We have to be loyal to the truth of, I am dedicated to show up. That's my truth. I'm coming to this dojo to show up, you know? I had to be loyal to my teacher because he's showing up, you know? And he's shown me that he's a man of integrity and he's shown me that what he teaches me works because I've had to use it and I've been able to survive what I did. So be loyal to truth, if nothing else. And truth, again, honesty, it's one of those virtues that we're responsible to. 
if we can do that, I think the country has a chance to heal. You know, unfortunately, in olden times, there were always galvanizing figures for which we could gather around. And lately, our, you know, our politicians uh, on both sides of the spectrum, I'm not really finding no good, as we say, you know, societal role models, because people are just kind of like out there. So when you don't have that societal role models, what do you do? Well, for us, it was easy. We were fortunate. We had Master Woods, Master Adams, Master Schaefer, Master Early, Master Rice, you know, Master Maven. We had those figures who taught us to be loyal to truth, who taught us what it meant to go for something, achieve it for the right reasons, use it for the right reasons, and teach it the right way. We had that. If you don't have a person like that in your life, turn to God, turn to Christ. Like you said, Jesus, now Jesus was loyal to a fault, loyal to the fault that he got up on that cross, okay? I'm just sorry, man. I don't know. I, 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 I One of my things I always tell people, when people get Eric, I say, you think you're perfect? i tell you what, go walk on that water. If you can walk on that water, then you got something to do. And I don't mean by mechanical means, because they got mechanical means that can let you trip. When you can get out there, go, we got something to say. Because that is a concept you can be loved to. That's truth there. That's power. That's grace. That's love. That's someone's going to die for you, sacrifice that. That's someone who's loyal, you know? Just make sure you're loyal for the right reasons. And in order to find out those right reasons, be loyal to truth. Ask yourself, evaluate. I'm part of this group. What do they really stand for? Don't be afraid to ask the hard questions. Some people, they don't really want to ask the questions because they don't really want to know. And that takes us back to honesty because there's comfortable in ignorance. There's really there's comfortable in ignorant to it, you know? Don't settle for that. Be loyal to truth. Be loyal to improving yourself. That means you got to ask the hard questions. You got to make the hard choices. You got to let people go. You got to allow people in, you know, and there's nothing wrong with disagreeing with folks. And there's nothing wrong with being disagreed with. Don't think that you're always right, but don't think that you're always wrong. Be loyal to the truth. And I think if we can do that as a country and start to put that message out, you know, we may have a chance of unifying, you know, if we can put the message as it's okay to be different. That's something that we're losing sight of, you know. We want to be the same. You know, I don't want to be white. I just want to have the same opportunities that many white folks have. I want my kids to be able to go out and enjoy their evenings without fear of the reprisals that many white teens don't have to deal with. That's what I want, you know. I'm pretty sure you don't want to be black, but you want to be able to know that, okay, my child is going to still get this job and not because this person here was black who's infinitely less qualified is getting it just because they're, you know, there are concepts and concerns on both sides of that. You know, we have to start saying and telling and making it vocal. It's okay to be different. Different doesn't mean wrong. It just means different. Be loyal to truth. Find out the truth of who that person is. Find out the truth of what that cause is. Find out the truth of what that statement means. Be loyal to that truth. And then our country can start to grow. Because if we don't, if we keep finding, following blind causes and, and just conflict for conflict sakes, it's not going to happen. You know, there's a line in Batman. Yes, me and my movies with Christian Bale when uh, Michael Caine was Alfred and he's talking. They're trying to figure out, the, the, you know, the whole thing behind the Joker and Alfred. I love this line. He says, sometimes some men, they don't want a reason. Sometimes some people just want to watch the world burn. We're at that age, people. We're, 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 people say, oh, we're on the edge of anarchy. No, we're in it. We're at the tipping stone, okay? It could go in either direction. You, some people just want to watch the world burn and then take advantage of the spoils that's left off of the ashes clear. Start being loyal to finding out the truth. Be loyal to yourself. Be loyal to the truth of what it is that's around you so that you can move forward. Do not let loyalty be that chain that holds you down. Let it be that rope that makes you open your eyes and see. And like I said, it all comes back to the dojo. We saw that from the dojo, our training, we had to be loyal to those teachings or we was gonna get hurt. And it just spiraled out to everything. At, at work, be loyal to what your company represents. Don't necessarily be loyal to the company, be loyal to what your company represents. You mentioned earlier job shifting and Americans are good with that. One of the things is because sometimes the focus of a company will shift and the quality of a company will shift. 
And if that happens, and if you're loyal to the idea of what this company represented, then you can't stay there. You have to leave because now you're going against your beliefs. I can't be loyal to cheap manufacturing. I can't be loyal to that because that goes against my belief and my loyalty to being quality, being putting out a quality product. And I think Americans, it's, it's also, we're, we're the greatest country, man. It's a beautiful thing that we can focus and shift like that. You know, we will not say so loyal to an employer that we would just sacrifice our values and let this happen. No, we're going to say, uh, you ain't doing right. I'm gone. You know, you're not valuing what I stand for anymore. I'm gone. I'm going to find this person. You know? And yes, we're going to be, we're going to be loyal to that dollar because we still got to eat and our family still got to eat and we still got to pay for this internet that allows us to have these Zoom calls. So to a degree, we're going to do that. And there's nothing wrong with that. Do not let change you make do not let you do not let people tell you you're being wrong if you're being loyal to the truth of yourself being loyal to who and what you are you'll be okay yeah agreed 100 percent. and i think loyalty to yourself is is it should not be a concept that we turn away from uh because essentially that's you know that's what started this this whole thing you know, all of the the virtues that we've discussed have to do with with yourself. Uh, and without without it starting with you, you know, I can't force loyalty of other people. That's not loyalty. I have to I have to show loyalty. You know, that's something that I have to do. It's in me. And by showing loyalty, other people can observe and hopefully you know, develop their, their own loyalties. And, you know, none of this is, is easy. None of the virtues that we've discussed, none of these seven, whether it was integrity, respect, courage, honor, compassion, honesty, and, and even loyalty uh, are things that come easy. Uh, they all come with the opportunity to uh, offend somebody or bring about some sort of loss. Uh, but that's where you have to develop that internal strength. You know, and, and that, again, comes from the confidence and uh, self-awareness that, that we build in the dojo. I think that's where our, the roots of that lie for us is in that struggle in, in, the, in the dojo. Uh, you, you brought up an interesting uh, thing there about you know maybe not necessarily having the right people to look up to but as you mentioned being loyal to the ideas or being loyal to the concepts we can in essence become our own hero i mean people if you don't have that person to look up to become that person for somebody else to look up to you know you you have the ideas you have the the information you know be loyal to that as you've said so so well be loyal to the information and become that person that somebody else looks up to because i don't care who you are or what your vocation is or what your station in life is somebody's watching you always you know, and not just because it's the internet age, but somebody's looking at you. Several years ago, I put a picture up on my Facebook page of my granddaughter. Uh, she had, I was putting a starter on my truck in the driveway. You know, I was out there one morning, it had, had to be done. I crawled up under my truck, you know, swapped out the starter, whatever. After I finished, I come in the house, got cleaned up, went outside. She had her wagon up on the ramps and she was laying up under the wagon, you know, working on her wagon. So she had observed what I was doing and was mimicking my actions. Adults do that. Kids do that. Teenagers do that. If you're, a, you know, if you're putting forth a negative example, somebody's watching that and, and they're going to mimic that. So be loyal to those positive attributes 
and try to put forth a positive example for for people to follow and loyalty is consistency you know it's a, it's being consistent in what you do you know being loyal to those virtues being loyal to those ideas being loyal to those habits uh, is fundamental in improving our society you know our our first loyalty uh, needs to be to humanity, you know, uh, not white, not black, not Asian, not, you know, Arabic or Muslim or whatever. Our first loyalty needs to be to humanity. And uh, sometimes that's difficult and it's going to bring about losses, but you got to have your ideologies in order and your loyalties in order. So true. And given the fact that we strive to be loyal to those listening to us and not take up your whole day. I believe we're coming on our time. Yeah. And as always, as always, we, Sensei Ellis and I, we strive to, only thing we want to do is spark a dialogue. We're not saying we're better than anyone. We're not saying we're more enlightened with anyone. We're not saying anything. What we're saying is we've been blessed to be part of a system that has taught us virtues that we can apply to our everyday lives. And we just want to share that. And on that note, I'm going to give it to Sensei to take us home like he always does. Um, yeah, this is, excuse me, we're rounding out uh, this whole series of the seven virtues of Bushido. Uh, again, just a integrity, respect, courage, honor, compassion, honesty, and now loyalty. No one of those virtues outweighs the other. Uh, no person is going to have those in equal balance. You know, you're going to have strengths, you're going to have weaknesses, uh, just as we do in our, in every other aspect of our lives. Um, in, in the dojo, we have strengths and we have weaknesses. And what we try to do is, uh, bring our weaknesses up and improve on our strengths, right? Eventually you want to have even your weakest point be something of value. You know, Sensei used to tell us all the time about having that road technique. You know, you take that one technique and you do it, do it, do it, do it, do it until it can't fail. Then that one's in your toolbox. Now you pick another one, do it, do it, do it, do it, do it. And eventually, you know, you, you build a, a repertoire of techniques that are, are valuable to you that's a, the same thing with what we've been discussing. Everybody has all of these in them in some level. Uh, it's just, is it a level that's benefiting you? Is it a level that's benefiting the people around you? Uh, start with yourself and then work out to your circle of influence and then into your community. Uh, and then, as I mentioned, this closes out this series. so not quite sure what our next topic will be, but we encourage the people who are sharing their time with us, leave a comment, uh, let us know uh, if there's something out there that you would like for us to consider or explore. Uh, we're looking for ideas. We hope to bring some guests on in the future. We know a lot of interesting people. Uh, we're, we're hoping to do that in the next few weeks. So. That's, that's about it for today. Appreciate it. Uh, happy Thanksgiving. Hope everybody had a blessed Thanksgiving. And we're looking forward to the Christmas holiday. Yeah, and everybody, please continue to stay safe. Please follow the relevant COVID gold lines, um, excuse me, COVID guidelines. And uh, hey, enjoy your weekend, everyone. This yes. is Sensei Gully saying take care. Sensei Ellis saying the same. Be, be safe out there. We'll see y'all next time.